Hey guys, maybe you can see in the background it's snowing that time of year again. Um, I was going to go over a little uh, tip for you guys to show you guys how to make your two-stage snowblower throw twice as far and stop that annoying clogging. Where the chute clogs up, everybody that has a snowblower or two-stage knows about this. Um, I have a little trick that I've done to dozens and dozens of snowblowers um, that just makes them a thousand times better. Makes them throw twice as far and never clog up. Um, you're amazed. So let me show you what I got here. So right here we actually have a, uh, a Honda. Should be the best of the best, right? But this, like all two stages, likes to clog up the chute. As soon as you get into just a little bit of wet snow, it just blurps out and you're getting a stick and you're chugging it out. And uh, that's the reason why people lose their fingers is because they're trying to unclog that and they're sticking their fingers down there. And, you know, before you know it, you're missing one. So... I'm going to show you guys something. Okay, I just loosened a couple of bolts and usually your chute will just pull right off. And now we're looking down in there. And what you have, this is called your impeller. I do have the spark plug removed. So you don't chop your fingers off. And I made sure there's no tension on this thing. But you have your impeller. And this is what spins. This is the second stage. This is what makes it a two stage. That spins and throws your snow out. The problem with these is this is always metal. And... The housing is always metal, but they built in a set. They build in a uh, a clearance. Um, whether it be, um, I've seen it as bad as like half inch, maybe even five eighths, um, down to you know quarter inch or so. Would 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 most of them are, but even with that, you can see in this one that the snow just ices up around the edges. Um, I don't know if you guys can see. So what it does, ices up around the edges and the snow sticks to it. Um, so any fresh snow that's going into there sticks, has something to build up on and likes to build the continuous ledge and that's why it actually compacts. Now what I do is I actually build up these and make so the tolerance is zero. And the way I do that is I actually get access to the rubber these are old, used junk rubber, rubber paddles from snowblowers. These are the old, straight ones that the one on the front of a like a single stage. There's a single stage right there. Just the little rubber paddles. That one has curved ones. I don't have an old straight one. But anyway, I not throwing it, ever throwing anything away. Usually these are longer. I save these and I use these just for this purpose. And then I also have some shorter ones for other snowblowers. But what I do is this impeller has four blades. What I do is I mount this to that little blade, and as this goes around, since this is rubber, it can actually touch the edge, and they actually wear out with a nice chamfer, and I actually like to leave that against the housing so it wears out quicker and makes itself exactly to the edge, and that'll clean it all the way around. Now, you don't need to install it on all four. I usually just install it on two, and that is ample. So, I'll show you what I'm going to do. These... These two came off of other snowblowers. These, these, this will be perfect. This is all you need. And all we're going to do is screw this to there. If you didn't have, I mean, I, I know people aren't going to have this just laying around. So other things you can use, and I've used it before, is I used to use um, mud flaps. Um, I, w I just went to a trailer supply store or a truck store. I bought one huge mud flap. It cost me like five bucks, and I've cut that thing up for a million of things millions of things through the years or if you have an old tire cut out the, a piece of the sidewall and you can actually use that in here as well clean this out pretty good so you guys could see I don't know if you guys can see that but that's about a three-eighths of an inch gap and that's what's between that blower housing and the impeller and what we do is piece of rubber no matter what you get really doesn't matter the length as much you know this one's a lot shorter than this, I can cut this to there, but you need two holes in it. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set this here. I like this chamfered edge because it wears down faster. So if I use a piece that doesn't have a chamfered edge, I actually cut, chamfer it. I did cut it a little bit. I trimmed this one a little bit over this one just so this one hasn't been trimmed yet. Just so it fits in there good. And I'll push it all the way up against the housing. And then I got my two holes towards the back. So what I'm using is self-tapping screws, metal screws. And if you don't know what those are, they just have a little um, drill point at the tip. Some better than others. Then they have a nice flat head. Um, 
and I like to use these. You don't really need bolts. I've done it with bolts before, it's just, I think it's a little overkill. Put that back where it was. And let's see if we can get these to self tappers to self tap. Wow, there we go. Didn't even pre drill. Loosen that up just a little bit. There we go. That's it. And now that'll actually, it's actually touching and cleaning at the same time. So perfect. Um, you won't be able to do that on a Toro. Toros make theirs a lot thicker. Um, you might be able to do it on a lot of the newer ones. A lot of the newer ones actually use plastic and it does work good for those, even the self tapping screws. So now what I'm going to do, uh, since I have four, I have two right here, one here, one here right now. I'm going to flip it 180 degrees. And I'm going to do the exact opposite side. And they're touching about um, about a sixteenth to an eighth of an inch. But that's what I want them to do because I got that edge there. And I want them to wear out. So the very first couple times this spins around, you're going to hear it rubbing, you know. But after running it for five minutes, it'll be completely um, catered to the inside of there. And every time it swipes around, it'll completely clear all the snow in there. And it won't, it won't clog up anymore. And one of the reasons this works is anytime you have an impeller, the most efficient impeller will have virtually like a zero clearance between the, um, the blade, the impeller, and the housing. The problem is, is you have a metal impeller, metal housing. And if you get too close, they're going to connect and you're going to have damage. And snow, snowblower manufacturers don't want that to happen. So the error on the safe side, you know, the metal probably does flex in there a little bit. If you hit a piece of ice, it'll probably bend. It will bend a little bit, and you don't want ever the impeller contacting the housing. Now, the rubber, I mean, that's going to deflect. That's going to absorb. It's going to absorb shocks. It's going to go around. But also, the further out, and it doesn't sound like much, but that, that 3 8 of an inch, that half inch, whatever yours is, um, the further out it goes, actually the faster it's moving the more miles per hour that thing is rotating or kilometer per hour for you other guys. Um, but the faster that's actually moving on the outside and actually the more oomph that it'll actually throw it at, you know. I actually had a friend that was given a snowblower, a $600 snowblower, because it was so horrible. Would not throw the snow. You know, unless you had huge mounds of really fluffy snow, um, it would not work. It had a plastic impeller. Um, had three blades, so we ended up having to put one on each one because it was all three. But I did that. It took me all of 15 minutes, um, and that was six years ago. Still using it today. Loves it. Loves it. Works amazing. Um, the guy that gave it to him was overly jealous. Couldn't believe that you know such a simple little fix made a $600 snowblower actually work and not be a piece of junk. So let me put the shoot back on. And I'll see if I can throw some snow for you guys. There you go, guys. That Honda, that Honda right there is now worth its million bucks at the cost. That made a huge difference. I actually wasn't going to do it to this machine because some machines are a lot worse than others. But I took it out. Only had roughly two inches of really, really wet stuff. And... It just bogged up. It just kept clogging up. After the sixth time of it clogging up in a row, without even making making a 20-foot swath, uh, I brought it right back in the garage and said, screw that, and busted out the, the Toro. Love the Toro single stages. Awesome machines. If you don't have, you know, if you're thinking about buying a machine, those little Toro single stages are awesome. They'll work great for, you know, if you get a foot of snow, they still work awesome, especially the higher horsepower ones. But the next day, you can see that it's sunny out, so I'm going to do a test with the worst thing that you can ever do to a, um, a two-stage, and that's the slushy stuff in the gutter at the end of your driveway. I'm gonna show you guys doing that with the two-stage and not getting clogged. First, let me show you what I'm throwing.
Well, there you go, guys. If you haven't already, click the thumbs up button and subscribe. Leave me a comment below. Tell me if you've tried this before. Tell me if you've got a snowblower that you want to try it on. Um, I'll try to answer any questions I can. Thanks, guys, and um, enjoy the winter. See you soon. Bye.